All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, let's try and keep this somewhat short. I'm going to leave this very open-ended. You guys, this is your first video that you guys are going to have a lot of homework to do this summer. It's easy homework. Believe me. Uh, our road ditch or that grass between our fields is the healthiest soil on our farm. Uh, what can we learn from that? Uh, before we get into it, I picked up this little microbiometer, microbiometer kit. Uh, I'm hoping that it becomes a wonderful toolkit from me. I met a guy down on I-90 during the I-90 field tour with uh, Dr. Dwayne Beck, name drop, and he was explaining how he uses this thing and how it's helped him learn more about his soils and made them better. Uh, since then, I've reached out to a few other people and they're like, yeah, we have one. Works pretty good, you know, I really like it. I'm like, oh, sweet, I'm already behind the ball here. I'm, I'm way behind on this thing. Uh, the goal is I can use it to test uh, bugs in a jug products. Uh, we can do tests before and after tillage, before, during, and after cover crops, things like that. And, and just see what's happening on soil life. Um, and we can use it to test our road ditch versus our field. Which one has more life and a better balance of life? So I'm going to give you a bunch of things to, to, to go research. Um, research what carbon nitrogen ratio means to you as a farmer. What does the temperature of soil mean to you as a farmer? What does it mean uh, on how your plant is utilizing water and how your soil is utilizing water and, and how soil life is affected and your dollars that you put into fertilizer moving or not moving to your plant? Chem check temperature. Um, worms per cubic foot or whatever. Uh, pull a chunk of that soil up, measure the worms uh, from your field and from that. Look at what the soils look like. Do they smell different, different color, different structure? Does one look more cottage cheesy? Does the other one look more like horizontal and vertical, just hard lines uh, breaking apart? Um, what about water, you know, water infiltration tests? Do a simple infiltration test. Uh, make observations, make observations. So uh, if you have big, heavy driving rains, uh, and you just did some tillage or, or this spring as the frost is going out, um, go walk behind your fall chisel plowing when that frost is out and then walk on that grass. What do you notice? Uh, if you're out there doing tillage, it's a nice day, your field is pretty fit for tillage, go, go just poke a screwdriver in that and see what it feels like. Same in July and August when the, turns, when the ground is supposed to turn dry and hard. Uh, get a compaction probe out there. What does a compaction number mean to you as a farmer? <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you guys uh, some excitement and, and to educate yourself because all this stuff uh, means a lot to us farmers. All this stuff is why we spend so many dollars to grow a crop. Uh, when you're out there with your insecticide and fungicide, uh, stop and just look at the road ditch for a minute. Get your face right down in that grassway uh, between your fields or next to the woods, whatever, and just look at what is going on. And, and you look at your field and you're like, wait a minute, if I don't spray this fungicide, I'm going to have a bunch of disease. Um, but there's never any diseases in the road ditch. Uh, the insects, the aphids are going to eat my beans right away. Uh, but there's nobody decimating the road ditch but there's bugs in there eating some plants. What does that mean? Pull a BRICS readings. I'm telling you, BRICS readings can really open up your eyes. Buy a $50 refractometer from Amazon and uh, pull a BRICS sample out of that road ditch and out of your fields and start researching what does that number mean to you as a farmer. Uh, it means a lot because if you can start focusing on BRICS readings, you will start to change your farm. And, uh, but the big thing is what, so you, that's your guys' homework here in, in our soil here. I guarantee you, if I go over to a, a long-term full till field and pull a sample there and then go to that tree line and pull a sample, it will look like I went to another state. Uh, it is drastically different color, uh, structure, texture is, is very much different. It behaves and acts very different. Um, and so what can we learn from that? Well, we can learn two things. One, that if that grass line hasn't been moved for many, 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 many decades, 50 or 100 years, that's as good as our soil is going to get. Now you go, you know, 
somewhere a little bit more in depth. Uh, but, but as far as us farmers go, that, that should be our goal is to have soil as good as the road ditch or that fence line or that grass way that we just can't quite farm uh, between us and the woods. Uh, that will be the nicest soil and our goal should be to get there. Um, the other thing that that can teach us is that is without a doubt the best proof in the world that the rules of soil health work on your ground. The principles of soil health work on every single square inch of soil on this planet. The difference or the challenge is how do we implement them as farmers if we want to. Um, and so that's proof that a diverse crop, keeping the ground covered, uh, reducing the tillage, and keep a living root as long as possible is what builds soil. That's how some of you guys have such beautiful black dirt is because it was grasses before you came and broke it with a plow. And uh, and so, yeah, that, that's what, so it's living proof. And, and I'll, I'll say another thing is if, if that ground is actually fit for tillage, like the ground is good enough to do tillage, uh, look at that grass way. Um, I guess every time you go to the field to do something, compare your field to that grass way and research the difference. Chat GTP AI, you know, that thing can answer amazing questions and uh, tell it you heard it on Maple Grove Farms and, and it'll be like, oh yeah, I know John, I've had to write quite a few essays for that fool. Uh, <laughs> I did cheat, I did cheat and uh, used it for a couple committees that I'm on for cover letters and statements. <laughs> but, but seriously, look at them differences. We don't need to talk about all the different scenarios, but you go, you look at the differences. Find some soil that's mostly grass, hasn't been disturbed for 50 some years, and compare it to your field, and, and really dive into it and educate yourself about the things that you're seeing different. And I guarantee if you open your mind and, and start to see what it's telling you, uh, maybe you can start to implement this stuff on the farm and, and dare we say, make farming great again. I need to start bringing that back now that Trump is back. I need to start bringing that back. But, you know, instead of writing that check to the co-op, maybe you start writing that check to yourself or to your kid to get your kid back to the farm. Boom, that's what it's all about. And so I'm going to leave right there. A little open-ended. You guys got a lot of research to do, and uh, I'll be back.